Hello, it's Alex. I want to talk a little bit more about what my last video was about. So my last video was about expressing boundaries in relationships, especially when dealing with like romantic or sexual things. And this video is about something that I see people do. It's kind of like a form of rejection, you could say. And it's a way that people respond to others that I don't like, and that I think can be very harmful. And what this way is, is... So there are two people, and let's say one person is acting towards the other in a way that oversteps some boundaries. They're giving them some unwanted attention. And the other person doesn't express any boundaries explicitly, they just disappear. They just stop contacting the person. And this usually happens over electronic communication, and I want to talk about why a little bit. In person, if someone closes off to another person, it's usually very visible. So for example, if I'm in a conversation with someone, and the person wants to leave or stop the conversation, it's usually pretty clear to me. There can be some problems for people who have trouble reading social cues. So for example, people on the autism spectrum, people who struggle with social anxiety disorders, um, there are all sorts of reasons why people can struggle with reading social cues. But I think in general, in person, it's a little easier to tell these things. And similarly, if there's a person who's really avoiding me, I can usually tell. Like, if I notice that in a room, someone tends to walk away when I'm present, that's a pretty obvious signal, especially if it's a person that I'm trying to interact with. It's going to be pretty obvious to me. On the other hand, when someone just drops out of online communication, that's not always as obvious. And I want to make clear that there are two different types of dropping off. There's completely dropping off, so someone just completely stops responding to any sort of contact, and there's also kind of like half-assed dropping out of communication. So like someone that I used to have more extended conversations with, and suddenly we're having more like short interactions, and like I'll ask a question, they'll give me a really short answer. With electronic communication, it's much harder to read cues related to these sorts of behaviors. And I think that this is why it's really important, if you're interacting with someone over text, over Facebook, over any kind of electronic medium, especially ones that don't have any voice or visual component to them, I think it becomes even more important to be direct if someone has overstepped a boundary, if you're not interested in them in a specific way, if some type of attention they're giving you is unwanted. I think it becomes much more important to be direct with them. And I want to talk a little bit about how it feels to be on the receiving end of this when people close off. If I'm interested in someone and uh, things are going well, we're conversing a lot, the person seems to be engaging with me and expressing interest in me, and then all of a sudden something changes, like the person either stops contacting me entirely, or the person starts like interacting in a way that seems like lackluster or like not very enthusiastic. I don't know how to interpret it. And part of the reason is that there are so many different reasons that a person can change their behavior like that. And I know that because of my past history of interacting with all the different friends and acquaintances in my life. I've had a number of people that I'm very close to who periodically drop out of communication with me. And there can be all sorts of different reasons. Like some people just get really busy, some people lose their phone, some people go somewhere where they don't have great internet connectivity, some people are just really bad at responding to texts and have periods of th their life where they don't respond very well or very enthusiastically to texts. But they still like me, and I know that because I know them well, and we have like a close and intimate friendship with trust like that. When, when it's someone that I'm just getting to know, I don't have any of this context at all. So like, when the person either drops out of communication or scales back the communication, I don't know how to read it. And 
I've had instances where I've reached out to someone once or twice, and they don't respond, and then I reach out again, and then the person freaks out on me, and they're like, hey, I'm really not interested in you, I want you to leave me alone, why didn't you take the hint? And I'm just like, this seems kind of unreasonable, because all my close friends do this kind of thing to me from time to time anyway. So like, from my perspective, I really don't have the information to know what's going on in your, t your head. I'm not psychic, not a mind reader, and I don't have the context. I don't know you well, so I don't know how you treat or respond to other people. So I've seen people get angry at me, and what I've seen more often than that, I've overheard conversations where people are talking about other people not taking the hint, and they're similarly judging them, feeling angry at them, feeling frustrated at them. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why don't you just tell the person directly? You don't need to be harsh about it. You can just be like, hey, like, if you've texted me a lot, I'd appreciate it if you wait for me to respond before you text me again, because otherwise I get a little bit overwhelmed. That's a great guideline, and if people follow it, it's really effective at cutting down unwanted text attention from them. There are all sorts of other ways you can express boundaries. Um, I highly recommend being direct, and being both direct and respectful. Um, okay, so I've talked about the importance of doing this. Now I anticipate one objection, because this is an objection that I have heard a lot of people bring up when I've said these sorts of things in the past. And that is, it's usually coming from women talking about unwanted attention from men. And what I hear is, but I don't feel safe. And so there's this assumption that like, if you're a woman and you're receiving unwanted attention or unwanted advances from a man, that you are somehow going to be more safe if you just drop out of communication with him entirely, or if you give him sort of brief but polite responses that don't really like escalate the situation. And I really disagree with this. I don't think that this makes women more safe. And I want to talk about why, and it has to do with being on the other end of these sorts of exchanges. And I want to talk a little bit about different times and different ways I've been rejected. Uh, in college, I had a friend that I had a huge crush on, and we would hang out and study together a lot. And at one point, we were studying together on her bed, and I was talking to her, and I opened up a little bit about my feelings for her, and how I was interested in her, and she was like, you know, I don't really see you in this way, I don't really want to connect with you in that way, I really like the friendship that we have, I really want to just keep things the way they are currently. And she was pretty direct about that, and I went home that night and I was sad, and I cried a little bit, and like literally the next day I was over it. And I think part of the reason why I got over it so easily is that she was so direct with me. Like she listened to me, she didn't judge me or attack me, and then she told me what she wanted, like what her boundaries were, how she felt about me. It made it really easy for me. Now I want to share another situation that was a little bit harder for me. Later, there was someone that I had been hanging out with too, and we would have kind of like an intense connection when we would hang out, and she would tell me a lot about how much she connected with me intellectually, and how much she liked me. But then we would go for like a couple weeks, and she wouldn't respond to me very much, and then she would like want to meet up again. We'd meet up, and it would feel really good, and again, she would like express how much she liked me. And then, after a while, like, I kept expressing that I wanted to hang out more, and that I was interested in her, and she never really said no, she never really said that she wasn't interested in me, she never really said that she didn't like any of the attention I was giving her, but she sort of slowly withdrew from me. And I found that situation pretty painful and it was hard for me to get over her, and I harbored some frustration and anger towards her because of the lack of directness. Like, I felt that she had strung me along a little bit, um, I felt that she made it harder for me. And 
I also want to share some other situations. Like, I've had situations where I meet people out and about, and they're really enthusiastic. They're really friendly. Sometimes they even ask me for my number. So I give someone a number, whatever, and we start communicating, we start interacting, and then at a certain point, the person just disappears. And I also find those situations a little bit hard. It's confusing for me. Those situations often induce a lot of self-doubt. I'm like, did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? What is this about? Um, and it's because there's no communication from the other person. And if, if, and this has happened before, if I run into those people in my life, I feel weird about them. I feel uncomfortable around them. And I have a little bit of this, like, negative feeling towards them. And so, like, how does this relate to women being safe? Well, I would imagine that women would be safer if there were people out there that they had rejected in ways that led those people to feel good about the rejection. Um, I don't think I'm ever at risk of harassing someone or, like, committing violence against someone. But there are definitely people out there who've done that. Like, I've had people stalk and harass me. It can be very scary. So this is something I have direct experience with. But like, like the last thing I would want is for someone out there that I've rejected to be harboring animosity towards me, to be feeling angry, to be feeling like I hurt them. Um, it really is puzzling to me how another person could think that they are making themselves safe by being indirect with a person. Like, by dragging out the interactions, by being, like, polite and sort of having it go on and on and on. Like, how is that supposed to make someone safe? Like, to me, it seems like it would make them safe if they were direct with the people. And this fits with my experience of stalking and harassment. Um, when this person started stalking me, th there was an escalation. Like, this person was waiting for me in her car outside my home. This person looked up a class that I was in through the registrar at a college where I was taking part-time classes and showed up outside that class. So, like, it's pretty creepy. But, when I directly expressed to the person, in pretty strong terms, that I didn't like what she was doing, and that I wanted her to stop, only then did she stop. She did not stop when I was sort of sitting back from a distance and hoping that she would stop. Now, there's no guarantee that a person's going to respect your boundaries. Like, there are plenty of instances, and I know people who've been in these situations, there's plenty of instances where people will be direct, and then the person continues the behavior. And I think that's a whole other topic. Like, you might want to get the police involved in situations like that. But the point is, like, you're not making yourself safe by just ignoring a person, or by being polite to the person. I think that could make you much more unsafe, and mainly by leading the other person to feel more frustrated and angry. Because I think it's being in a place of frustration and anger that really increases the risk that a person will harass someone in a, in a major way or commit violence against them. So yeah, sorry this video took a kind of like heavy turn at the end. I'm anticipating some people might not agree fully with this. I would love to hear from you. Do you disagree with any of this? Do you agree with it? Um, I'm hoping to continue the discussion in the comments. Yeah, please let me know what you think. Thank you.